Welcome everyone. I am Amber J. Lawson, source goddess of Goddess Process, Goddess Tribe, the Get Your Spark Back program, and the Woman on Fire Mastermind. And I am thrilled you are here today. Today we are going to be talking through the 11 laws of attraction, how to manifest like an MF. And these are, this is an opportunity to look at the laws. Now, you have probably heard a lot of variations and have heard of these laws. We've all heard of the law of attraction. We get our vibration. We get what we vibrate with. And, and that's how we attract those who follow Abraham Hicks. You, I'm sure, have been practicing this. And um, this is a... a conglomeration, a, a gathering of, of these laws into one space and time. And what I know to be true in my facilitation is we all hear things differently. We all process, we all have a, a, a lens in which we are listening to things. So sometimes, well, most of the time, it takes several times for it to A, get in our, our thick noggins, um, or sometimes you just need to hear it a little differently and for it to land. Also, we have seasons in our life. There are times when we are more receptive to ideas and thoughts and, uh, and integrating what is coming our way. So this is an opportunity, A, to check in, see where you are at on your manifestation, your attraction scale, and maybe where there is an opportunity to grow, to expand, to work in a certain area, to dial it up a little bit, dial it up to a 10, dial that down to an eight, whatever that is. And so this is an opportunity to check in. I invite you to pull out your journal uh, or a piece of paper or your phone or whatever you'd like to track. This is a really good list to come back to. Um, this a list was originally part of Manifestation Babe and the Rich Babe program. She put this list together, Catherine Zakina. I think it is super solid and I hope it brings value to you. I hope it supports you in your manifestation and abundance journey. And this is for every area of your life, not just money. It's for love. It's for calling in a career, your purpose, clarity in all areas of your life, love, receiving more love in your life. So here we go. Let's get down to it. Number one, the law of vibration. We are all energy and so is money. So is love. So is that job you want. So when I am, if I'm vibrating like I'll never get it or, or that's not for me or I'm, I'm not worthy of it. I don't know if I fit in this. Then of course, that's not going to be in alignment. It is, and this is an Abraham Hicks thing, a hundred percent. And if you don't already watch the videos, just Google her on, uh, on the YouTubes and there's a bazillion <laughs> videos. Um, but the law of vibration, I get what I vibrate with. You ever notice when you're joyful, how like the path just automatically unfolds for you? That is the law of vibration. You're meeting the world where it's meant to be. It's meant to, it is working in your favor. So the doors get to open for you. The path gets to be revealed with ease and flow. Should you choose it? Should you vibrate at the match? So number one, the law of vibration. Number two, the law of oneness. And I think this is like ding, ding, ding. The law of oneness states we are all one. Okay. So you know that like in theory, we are all one, but what's possible for you is possible for me. Meaning I see somebody who has what I want. That means it is possible for me. I don't need to covet it. It is already mine. Mine is divine. So how do I get to raise my vibration such that I have that attract that into my life? So um, I liken this to Lacey 
Oh gosh, I don't know her last name. Lacey talks about expanders. So, it, or you may use a vision board is kind of an, another physical visual tool for this. If it's, if it's physical in the world, if it's physical in the world, it means it's, it's possible for you. It is possible to have it in your physical world as well. So expanders are looking for people. Maybe there is a relationship. I just saw this like super juicy couple on Instagram. And I was like, if it is possible for them, it is possible for me. Granted, you know, we can have the whole social media conversation. However, if it lives in the world, it can live in me. These are expanders. As opposed to coveting thy neighbor, you are looking at them as inspiration and expanding your realm of possibility. It is number two, the law of oneness. Number three, the law of action. Physical action creates results on the physical plane. So how many of us have heard like, oh, I wish it into existence or, uh, oh, they make fun of us, right? They make fun of us, law of attraction, manifestation, humans in the world that like, oh, I just thought it and poof, it came. Well, that's not really how it works. You get to create the momentum so that you can be met. You get to take committed action in each one of our goddess church uh, ceremonies, which is the new moon or full moon ceremonies, we practice th the three C's. The first C is clarity, clarity on what I want. The second C is clearing, clearing out anything that is in my way, a limiting belief, clearing what no longer serves me. And the last C is committed action. Without action, there is no momentum to allow and attract what you're calling in. So number three is the law of action. Number four, the law of correspondence. Your internal reality is matched by your external reality. How many times have you heard like, oh, the like negative self-talk? Like I say all the affirmations, I am beautiful, I am worthy, I am abundant, but on the inside, I feel not worthy. I feel constricted. I feel like it will never happen for me. Well, just notice our external reality is exactly what we believe on the inside. It is a direct reflection of this. It's the law of correspondence. So what's happening in here is happening out there. So if you don't like what's going on out there, we get to work on our self-talk into our internal and eternal beliefs. What do you actually believe? Do you believe the universe is working in your favor? Do you believe that these things can actually show up in your life? If not, we got to release and let go of what no longer serves us. Step into our truth. When I have clarity and what I want, everything else clears out of my path. My path is illuminated and I have ease and flow. But if I'm in my mind saying something else, it is not going to show up in the world. Certainly not with the speed that we all desire. We want it fast and quick. Yes. And all in right divine timing. All right. The next law, one, two, three, what I think we're at four, four or five, the law of cause and effect. The energy you put out is the energy you get back. The energy you put out is the energy you get back. So we get to put energy towards the things we want. Are we calling in a partner, but we're not doing the work on ourselves? We're not showing up in our radiant being, stepping into our goddess, our high priestess, queen self. Then, then that's not going to come back to us. The energy you put out is the energy that comes back. The next law is the law of attraction. You attract what you're a vibrational match to. So what are you vibrating at? See it and here it is. So vibrate. And if, and if your vibration is off, if you're not attracting what you want in your heart, in your true heart of hearts, then let's raise your vibration. Meditate, move your body, dance, walk, go be with nature. 
whatever that is for you that mm, activates your vibration, that, that brings you joy. What like mm, puppies, dogs, unconditional love, kids, whatever that is for you. The next law is law of rhythm. Life, energy, money is seasonal and cyclical. There will be ebbs and flows and it's all part of the process. So this is a this is one we practice a lot in the Get Your Spark Back program. So S, self-care, P, prosperity, R, relationships, and C, community contribution. In, in everything, there is a season. And we don't fault the trees that lose their leaves in the fall and stand dormant in the winter. And then lo and behold, come spring, they start to bud and summer, they bloom. We too are sacred trees. We too are seasonal. And that means for a job, relationships, uh, a, a purpose, a focus, wherever in your life, everything has a season. That season may be a day, a month, a year, or a lifetime. But the, the, opportunity in that is to, in our society, in our belief system, it's like we have failed if a relationship comes to an end or a, a job is complete or we start a new career and we left one behind all that work we had put in. No, that is the seasoning. That is the nutrients. That is the knowing the wisdom that I'm taking into the next experience. And that may not happen like this, right? We have an idea, a, a thought, a, a new passion, something coming up in our, the trunk of our tree, coming into fruition. And it starts to bud. Maybe, maybe new opportunities start to pop or things we thought were coincidences start to connect. The web starts to interweave and we start to bud new ideas. New ideas start to pop into our consciousness. And then when summer comes, whenever that is, it comes into its full, full glory. It is budding and bloomed and blossoms in, in full expansion, full glory, full uh, vibrance. And that may last for an eternity or it may last for a year, whatever that season is. And then when it is time, like in seasons, those leaves may brown. And this is the like key part of this is when the leaves brown, knowing it's okay to release the leaves. You don't see trees holding on to those leaves for dear life. No, they release them. They let them go and let them fall to the ground because what's that doing? It's creating space for something new. It is creating the space and those leaves falling to the ground become the nutrients they are broken down into the soil that strengthens your roots, that deepens your roots, that expand your wisdom for what's next. And then, yes, this too shall pass. The winter thaws and new ideas, new opportunity, new love begins to bud begins to course through your veins up through your knowing into the physical and the season the process begins again so just know there are ebbs and flows there are seasons and this when this happens when you see the leaves browning this is your opportunity you want to speed up your manifestation let the leaves drop let them fall into the ground and become the nutrients to strengthen you for your next journey. This is a big one, one of my favorites. I really think it's so potent. The next law is the law of compensation. 
the energy that you put out will come back to you in the form of gifts, blessing, and money. It may not come back and look exactly like, oh, I gave $10, I get $10 back. No, it may come back and someone taking you out to a lovely meal or inviting you out on a walk in nature, some sort of blessing or gift of love. And maybe it's abundance. Maybe you get an unexpected windfall. Maybe it comes from an unexpected source. Where do you get to see where you called in? I've, I've just been doing this a lot lately, like calling in uh, very specific uh, wants, needs, and desires, and they showing up in just surprising, delightful ways. And when I reflect back, I'm like, oh, of course, of course, this came in this way. Of course, it, it just popped into my life and was so potent and so expansive and so loving and joyful. And it's everything I asked for. Ah, oh, it's so good. So good. I love it, love it, love it. All right. The next one, and I think this is number eight or nine, the law of gender, the law of gender balancing action with receiving. This is the masculine and feminine. How many of us in our society today are doing ourselves to death? We do, 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 do. And what's interesting about the modern woman today, and, and I, I would say this about the man as well, is our worth, our value has been tied to our doing. How, oh, I work an 80 hour work week. I did my whole to-do list. Check, 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 check. It's like we are, are playing the Olympics of the doing game, yet there is no uh, award ceremony at the end. In fact, we're working ourselves to the grave versus our feminine which is being, we are enough just by being here in this body, in this space with your talents, your specific gifts that you're blessed with on the, on the planet at this time in this meat suit, doing the do. So, so when we are spending all of our time doing, we are not leaving the space for the receiving. So you wonder why you're not getting the reflection back to you. It's because you filled all the space. You're doing all the things. You're not giving your partner an opportunity to show up because you already did it. And then they give up because you're just going to do it. And, and we're teaching them to, to be that way. You teach everybody how to treat you in your life. So if you don't allow support to receive, to get the gift of, a dinner, of the door open, of bringing in the groceries, of that windfall, of a raise, of whatever that is, then you're not leaving the space for that. So leave space. And, and that's hard in our society because we are so tied into uh, believing that if I do more, I'll get more. But you do. And then you get to open the space for it to come back to you, for it to, to receive it, to, to have the breadth and space for the receiving. All right. The law of perpetual transmutation of energy. You can move energy and create something completely new out of nothing. Ooh, if you do not like the energy that's going on, move it. I like to use dance, right? If I'm in a crappy mood, if I feel, if I'm feeling sad, if I'm feeling down about myself and against my like, oh, well, I'll be like, all right, fine. I'm going to put on one song, one of those ones like the Kelly Clarkson since you've been gone or, you know, anthem -y songs that like get you, maybe that's not your jam, but whatever your jam is uh, that fires you up, that shifts you. Maybe, maybe it's something slow. Maybe it's sensual. Maybe it's sexual. Maybe it is jump up and down and rock out. Whatever that is, 
this is an opportunity to shift and transmute the energy. Like if something's going a certain way, it doesn't have to go that way. And you can be conscious enough to choose a different way and know that your state, how you be is source of everything, source of everything. So the law of perpetual transmutation of energy, you've got the power, you've got the power. The law of polarity. All right, the law of polarity. You get what you don't want, so you gain even more clarity on what you do want. This is what uh, Abraham Hicks talks about contrast, right? So, okay, you're going along, you're in relationship, you decide this relationship isn't for you, you get clarity. It's not bad, good, right, or wrong. Right? You just got new clarity, new awareness of, oh, I don't, I needed this relationship. Like, look at this relationship brought me X, Y, and Z. And in relationships moving forward, I am clear my partner gets to live in the same country I live in. My partner gets to live in alignment and the same purpose, or we're in aligned purpose. You know, uh, I get to have uh, on a be on a conscious journey with a partner. My last partner wasn't conscious, wasn't ready for that journey, wasn't ready for that awakening. Great, fine, awareness. So it's contrast. Contrast shows me, like I oh I went and did a corporate job. I realized. I don't want to do a corporate job. Like that is not in alignment for me. It may be in total alignment for someone else. Perfect. That is great. So that is the law of polarity. And I think this is last but not least, the law of relativity. Every soul is given a challenge for the sake of growth and evolution. So, you know, yeah, you get to face some challenges in your life. Uh, when the rubber meets the road, when there is friction is where growth happens. So I always look at when I'm having a bad day, when I am having um, some friction is an opportunity for me to expand. Where do I get to grow? Where do I get to expand? Where do I, where do I see my next level up? You know, to yesterday's ceiling is today's floor. Where do I get to expand for the sake of growth? I hope these 11 laws of attraction were supportive for you. If they were, I hope you will join us in Goddess Tribe, in our tribe journey, um, or hop on a spark in my signature program, self-care, prosperity, relationships, and community, and contribution. If you are looking for your purpose, if you're looking to deepen your relationships, have more intimacy and vulnerability in your connections in life. We are starved for connection. And sometimes we just don't know how to get there. Prosperity, money equals self-worth, but the foundation of everything is self-care. If you don't put your oxygen mask on first, you'll be dead on the floor. So let's put our oxygen mask on and join me, join me in this journey. It is an honor to be with you. I am grateful you have stayed this long through this. I hope it was supportive for you. Please comment, share this, and I look forward to seeing you on our next journey.